What would it look like if Satan had a church where he could actually physically manifest himself and preach the word of God to people? Um, I'm going to show you a man, a minister of Satan, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We'll just read a couple of verses here to you if you're not familiar with these verses, if you're newly saved. really need to be paying attention to this first, or excuse me, 2 Corinthians 11, starting in verse 13. For such are false apostles, de deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Okay? So Satan's ministers are not Anton LaVey or Marilyn Manson or whatever. It's not some goth looking vampire or whatever. They're ministers of righteousness. Okay? Uh, the Ho Hollywood has done a very good job of, of putting images into your mind about what Satan is not. Satan is not a red guy that, with a pitchfork that lives in hell. That's not Satan. Satan is a beautiful angelic being who appears as an angel of light. He's bright. That's why you have these people and they say, I saw this bright angelic being. It was so beautiful. You're, they're seeing Satan. Okay. I've seen that thing. But we're going to watch one of Satan's little ministers here. This guy is absolutely wicked. Uh, good buddy with uh, uh, Rick Joyner. Rick Joyner is a member of the Knights of Malta, a Roman Catholic secret society. Um, and he pro claims to be a Protestant preacher too, this Rick Joyner guy. But check this out. This is Bill Johnson at his, I guess this is at his Babel building, whatever. Looks like an all public all someplace but this these guys are slick okay these guys are very slick and very smooth and very polished with the way they talk listen to what he says here he didn't say pray for the sick he said heal the sick so it's really bizarre when God commands you to do something you can't do it's a strange moment of awakening when you realize how incapable you are of doing what he said to do but the real issue is we actually think we can do the rest of the Christian life. When the rest of the Christian life is equally impossible. The whole point is, it's our connection with the Spirit of God that makes it possible. So it's difficult to expect the same fruit of the early church when we value a book they didn't have more than the Holy Spirit they did have. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When we value a book that they didn't have more than the Spirit of God that they did have? You see? Now, did, is it true that they didn't have the King James Bible or a book like this with the Hebrew Old Testament and the Greek New Testament? Is it true that they didn't have a book that they could walk around? Yeah, it's true. But see, by he's what he's implying here is that they didn't care what the Scriptures said. That's what he's implying. They, they relied on the Spirit. They went with the Spirit and how their feelings moved them and the Spirit moved their feelings. See? Yea, hath God said. This is how Satan's ministers do things. They want to take away the authority of written scripture. I mean, who are we to judge? I mean, you know, it could we I feel that this is right and I feel that is right, and you know, see? That's what he's saying here. But look what he says next. <coughs> It's not Father, Son, and Holy Bible. No, this is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. But you've got to understand, you approach this book with this reverence. It is the Spirit of God that makes it living. Paul warned us. He said, the, the letter kills. How many wars have been fought with this book? Okay. Paul warned us. The letter kills. What's he talking about there? Well, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, where's the verse at here? I just had it. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Now, what's it talking about there? What's the letter? The letter of the Old Testament law. It will kill you in terms of your self-righteousness. It will say, you're wicked, you're going to hell. 
The law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. That's what Paul's talking about here. Paul is not saying you are not supposed to read the Bible and have that as your final authority. Let me show you. This Satanist here is deceiving these people. And notice the people applaud him. Why do they applaud him? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Not feelings. Not just whatever the spirit within me decides to say. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You see? And I don't mean fables the book. I'm saying amen to what the verse is saying there. Bill Johnson. Minister of Satan. You see? And why are the people out there applauding? Because there's a lot of people who are very wicked and they say, I'm a Christian, but they can't stand the standards of this book. And you'll see these people, you'll meet these people, and you say, well, you know, the Bible says, and they'll go, I don't care what the Bible says. That doesn't bother me. I don't care about the Bible. I don't care what the Bible says. We ought to read the Bible sometime. First Timothy, excuse me, Second Timothy 3.16. If uh, we're not supposed to live by the Bible... We'll start at verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, not feelings, not known the Holy Spirit that leads you into truth without having written Scriptures. Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Why isn't he telling the people these verses? Well, that's right, because we're not supposed to be bound to a paper book. Just just with the Spirit, whatever the Spirit tells you to do. He's a Satanist. Disgusting. And of course, you know, he uses the Vatican versions, which are not going to lead you into anything except hell. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You say, oh, I don't need it. I have a feeling that I'm saved. <laughs> what does that mean? I have a feeling you're lost. Who's right? How can you prove who's saved and who's lost? You say, nobody can. <laughs> we just wait till eternity. Do our best down here. Well, that's brilliant. You know, that's real brilliant. No, you can have... Assurance of salvation because of what is written. And this type of Satanist here wants to take that from you. Let's continue. Not just because of it, with the book. How many times do Christians chop off the ear of the opposing, the opponent, you know, with Scripture? How many times do Christians chop off the ear of the opponent with Scripture? Uh, well, because we, we love them enough to tell them the truth. See, I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm using Scripture, comparing spiritual things with things spiritual. You know, he talks about the Holy Spirit, and yet the Holy Spirit testifies of these things. You know, so if you're one of his little satanic followers, you need to really consider these things and, and look and see the authority of Scripture, why he's lying to you. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of, discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And he's making fun of that. How many times have people used the Bible to slash their opponents and enemies and things we're supposed to? Let's continue. Wanting to prove themselves correct. You know, it's, it's, it's the Spirit of God that makes this thing come alive to where we actually have the privilege of the Word becoming flesh in us again, where we become the living illustration and manifestation of what God is saying. Oh, we become the living manifestation. The Word becomes flesh in us again. Oh, what did Satan say to Eve in the Garden of Eden? Ye can be as gods knowing good and evil. 
after he gets her to add to the word and then he denies the word? No connection to Bill Johnson, though. Totally separate. It's the Holy Spirit that's leading the guy. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Let's continue. There are several things that we have to learn to do. The first is just the awareness of the Spirit of God, developing an intimacy with God that is not based on Him using us in ministry. It's not that He won't, it's just you're, you, have, you have a lid on where you can go. Because He can't trust you with too much because you'll think it's you. He wants to use this in ministry, so anyone who looks to him for that purpose will be used in ministry. There's just a lid. There's just a, there's just a limit to where you can go. <clears throat> but learning that dependency, relationship with the Holy Spirit, simply through friendship, actually will launch you in a greater dimension of the realm of miracles than it would if you were merely to seek him for miracles. It's, it's like if you had a, a friend who was famous. And every time he came to your house, you went and told all your neighbor, neighbors. So they were seen knocking on the door and asking for autographs and peering through the windows. Pretty soon, that famous friend wouldn't come to your house anymore because he would realize you were using yeah. friendship with that person to gain favor with your neighbors. It's prostituting a relationship. And the Lord likes friends. It's stunning to me what he did for friends. It's stunning to me what he did for friends in, in the Bible. David won such a place with him that God the Father decided to call his own son the son of David throughout eternity. <laughs> okay, this guy's stop here. This is a bunch of worldly philosophical junk. Just a bunch of garbage. Okay, Jesuitical, just little fun little word games and little thought-provoking philosophies, stupid bunch of nonsense. But, you know, he, he, he has friends and stuff, and, and David was such a, a good friend to God that, that God actually, you know, named his son, you know, you know son of David and throughout eternity and, and think, no, stupid, it's because of the messianic line. The throne of David. Jesus goes down through that line, genealogy. But look at uh, John chapter 14, verse 22 and 23. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. You see, God wants to use you in ministry but just there's a lid on it. There's not, there's not, you know, he, he doesn't want to give you too much glory or anything else. So you shouldn't use, don't be bound to a paper book. You should be, have an intimate relationship of feelings with the spirit, which you don't really know because you aren't really sure because you don't have a written account. But you can have a belief because you don't have the written account. It, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> coo, 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 coo. We'll watch a little bit more here. I don't know how much more this I'm going to show, but just want to illustrate this satanic teaching here. But uh, it's, it's funny because this is exactly what the modern Babel buildings are doing. They don't carry Bibles anymore. They hate the Bible. Interesting. Let's continue. That place in the heart of the Father. That you so move the Father that he decides, I'm going to call my son the son of David forever. How is it? that a Moses and an Abraham, when God is making decisions that affect the historic outcome of planet Earth, he expected them to come into the counsel of the Lord and to give their input. God says, I'm going to kill your people, Moses, that you led out of, Israel, out of Egypt. Moses says, wait, they're not my people, they're yours. And I didn't lead them out, you did. And God, in so many words, goes, yeah, you're right. Okay. That's not at all what the Lord said. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. God tests us, okay? God was testing Moses. That's all that it is. It's not that God's up there going, 
uh, hey Moses, what do you think? And Moses goes, well, God, you're, you're doing this wrong. And, and God goes, oh, yeah. Uh. You see the mocking spirit that's really here? Getting people to laugh at God and stuff like that. So, yeah, you're right. You know, <laughs> uh, Good as being in hell with the door shut. Let me tell you. Watch a little more. But it was like it was like he was expected to come in there and have that and have that engagement, engage with the Father. It's just that's what happens with friends. Now servants aren't expected to do that. And you know the difference between a servant and a friend is servants are task oriented. Their entire focus is on completing the list of assignments, the commands. <clears throat> Obedience is always important for the believer. <clears throat> but a friend just has a different motivation. The servant obtains his favor by what he does. A friend by the, by the relationship. John 15, it says, <clears throat> a servant doesn't know what his master's doing. A servant doesn't have access to the inner workings, motivations, thoughts of the master. The implication is the friend does. So whereas the servant's main goal is to do whatever is said, the friend's main goal has to do with the heart of the friend. Their thoughts, their impressions. It's not meeting a quota. It's bringing a joy through friendship. Mike Bickle says it best. He says there's two kinds of people in the world, in the body of Christ. There's lovers and there's workers. And lovers will always get more work done than will workers. Lovers will actually have more done in the realm of obedience than a slave will. But it's only because they've tapped into another resource in their heart. And that's what is available in the realms of passion and intimacy, friendship. Okay, again, let me just stop a little uh, princess here. But uh, it says here, John chapter 15, um, verse, we'll start at verse 14. He said about that, you know, John 15, and he doesn't give you, you know, he doesn't say turn to John 15. Look it up, up in your Bible. Notice the difference between Bible-believing Christians. I tell you, okay, let's go in your Bible to John 15, verse, see, they won't give you the scriptures. They won't give you the references because they don't want you to check them out and prove them wrong. John 15, verse 14. Ye are my friends. Now look at this. If ye do whatsoever, I command you. Uh-oh. I thought it was supposed to be, we're motivated by love. Oh, we, we're just motivated by love. And, and we shouldn't, you know, there's a difference between lovers and workers. <laughs> all these all these stupid little nonsense little things that he comes up with little philosophies oh it's so cute oh it's so nice it's what the people want to hear disgusting verse 15 henceforth I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go forth or go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it you these things i command you that ye love one another if the world hates you ye know that it hated me before it hated you if ye were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hateth you wonder why little uh, sissy britches here didn't uh, say anything about that Let's continue. So we have this assignment before us where our relationship with the Holy Spirit is so huge. And out of that, you know, so many people fight for acceptance and, and they, they work. They work to, to be accepted and to build an identity. They work. Their whole identity is built in their labors, in their Christian efforts of witnessing and praying and reading and doing all the things they're supposed to do. It's, 
is they labor to get some sort of an identity and, and they, they're hoping as a result of that identity that they would be accepted. <laughs> they labor and they labor and they work and they, and they, they, gotta, they gotta do all this stuff, you know, and, and everything. I mean, yes, that's what we're supposed to do. I'm trying to think of the verse here real quickly I wanna look up. The guy's, a, the guy's nuts. I mean, I, I cannot imagine any red-blooded man sitting through this. Or even even saved Christian women that know the King James Bible. Who sits through this kind of stuff? I mean, it's... It's really kind of amazing. You know, to see people actually sitting here taking this slop seriously. Uh, where are we at here? Yeah, Second Corinthians chapter 5. You know, it's just like, we're just supposed to like, we're not supposed to do all this work and like that we can have some kind of an identity with God and we're not supposed to work hard or anything like that. and We're just not supposed to. Oh, really? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Our motivation is supposed to be knowing the terror of the Lord. Let's watch a little bit more here. See, this stuff is just entertainment to me. I mean, I don't look at this and go, oh, he's, he's, he's so dangerous and, oh, he's making me lose my faith or something. This is entertainment. This is comedy. Let's continue. But the believer starts off accepted and that becomes our identity. And out of that comes our work, our labor. It's different for the person that starts with friendship. One of the things that we've, <clears throat> that we've rehearsed, Chris talked to you a bit ago about uh, the testimony uh, table that we have over here in the resource room. It's a big deal. It's not just, uh, we're not just trying to get notches on the back of our Bible to see what's happened. We're, we know that the Lord's requiring us to steward the miraculous that happens and to record. And part of the reason is as long as I stay conscious of the God who invades the impossible, I will live under the influence of continuous anticipation for the supernatural in interventions of God. I'm much less likely to be overwhelmed by something I didn't plan for. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what? As long as I believe in the impossible inter interventions of the spirit that could be within me, if he was within me, then I will be ready for the impossible to happen in my impossible life, which is impossibly understood be, to be... be you know, <laughs> in other words, I want to get away with as much devilment as I can, and I don't want you looking things up in Scripture to prove me wrong, because I'm just going to throw it and say, well, it's the spirit that's doing things, it's the Holy Spirit... And, this is why we can't get along with these people. Bible believers do not get along with this kind of nonsense. All right. We can see right through these wolves in sheep's clothing. This guy, he's not even a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's a, he's a wolf in wolf's clothing. All right. He's a snake. Serpent. Watch some more fun. If I do not stay conscious of the God who invades the impossible, then I will reduce ministry to my ministry gifts. I'll reduce it to whatever talent and gift God has given me, and I'll call that ministry. And I don't care if you can sing, if you can lead, if you can preach, it doesn't matter what it is that you can do. You're a businessman, a school teacher, it doesn't make any difference to me. That gift is like a sail on a boat. It's useless without wind. We need the breath of God on who He's made us to be. There has to be the supernatural element with whatever it is that God has given us to do. The breath of the Almighty God is what empowers that which we can do. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. We take that which is natural, we, we get everything in order, we've done what we know to do in the natural, and then we anticipate the breath of God to come and to make that which is natural, supernatural, and then we give Him all the glory for it. And just are thankful that He gave us, let us be in the room. Wow. How profound. 
whatever our natural talents are, 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, 1 Corinthians 12 mostly talks about the gifts that, are, that God gives to Christians. It's not going to be anything unless the Holy Spirit is behind it. Whoa, what a concept. Duh, <laughs> of course. But you see, what he's doing here, let me sum up the whole thing. And this is so important. That's why I'm doing this video, because this is happening more and more, especially among the charismaniacs. What they do is they say, you don't need this book. Close the book. You don't need it. You see, because we can go with experience. And we can do things. You see behind him there on the platform, you see all these electric guitars and stuff. So some guy could stand up and say, I'm going to make a Christian edition of some satanic rock music. And you go, and he'll say Jesus in it. And they go, oh, it's of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit's behind it because he said Jesus. Yeah, That's how bad it's gotten. I mean, Christian pole dancing. I'm not making that up. There is such a thing. Christian pole dancing. Christian uh, comedians, stand-up comedians. Christian uh, uh, swimming pool parties among the youth, you know, girls walking around in bikinis and guys, you know, yeah, that's not going to lead to problems. You know, hormone-driven teens and let's have pool parties. Brilliant. You know, Christian rock music, Christian heavy metal, Christian rap music, Christian, all this stuff. But see, how do you get that stuff through to people? How do you get their money? Well, if you stand up in a regular Bible-believing group of people and you start to talk about this stuff, people will be going, wait a second here. Turn your Bible to there. Turn the Bible to there. Whoa, you're false. So you, what you got to do is you got to say, close the book. Don't be bound to a paper book. You see how they're doing it? That's why I am exactly the opposite of this. Don't you dare rely on your feelings for one second. Your feelings are not the standard of truth. It is written. It is written. It is written. This is the standard for a Bible-believing Christian's life. You say, well, br brother, you know, the, the whole thing is, though, I mean, it just, okay, he's given some opinions. It's, it's not really affecting his people. I'm sure that there are genuinely some saved people in his, uh, his congregation there and everything. I'm going to show you one. A guy actually out the kind of like street preaching, I guess, and, and uh, he's trying to witness to these members of his church. And this one woman, uh, young woman, I'm not even call her, I'm going to call her lady because she's not dressed like a lady. She's dressed like a whore, a uh, harlot. And uh, she's out there in the parking lot. And I mean, before you watch this next section, I need you to pause the video. Go get yourself something that you can vomit into if you have to. Because uh, <laughs> it is bad it is real bad it is very vexing i'm not even gonna play the whole thing i mean ugh, it it's bad this the kind of people that are coming out of this satanist uh little church check this out that's a set of oh, questions. I'm a perfect person. So weird. Hello, are you in there? Are you in there? Can I ask you a question? What are you what are you doing this for? Because <laughs> because I'm a Bible believing Christian and the, the Bible says that we're going to mark those who are false and teach something other than what was first received. And we are supposed to to point them out to others. Okay, so I'm sure you do this a lot, right? Never so I have done it I've done it twice before with a couple of other Are you making any progress? Are you are you saving souls by doing this? The Lord knows. You're wasting your time, bro. Are you, That's what are you're you doing. Christian, Absolutely. Of course I'm a Christian. How you what? How you say Let's all preach the uh, love please. of God together in right, communion. We're all made one in Him. Yeah. We're all love no matter what theology we believe. How did you <laughs> We're all love no matter what theology we believe. So God the Holy matter. Spirit. We're loved perfectly no matter what we believe. No matter what. So you're, Every you're a universalist? Person Every person goes to heaven? Is perfectly loved by God. Every person goes to heaven? Love. I don't know. I can't claim to know what happens but after we die. Of course, sinners don't go to heaven. God. Is God love? Does God, does God send people to hell who he perfectly loves? Should we be worried about hell yeah. or heaven? Jesus did everything for me so that I can go be with him forever. <laughs> and it's the 
Have you ever heard the biblical, you ever heard the verses that talk about, have you ever heard the verses that talk about people who stand before God? I can't wait to stand before God. And they say, Lord, 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 didn't we do all these miracle things in your name? And you remember what Jesus said to him? Yeah, yeah. You know what Jesus said to him? Yeah, I never knew you. Yeah. But, you <laughs> but we that... don't do it out of works. We do it out of love. We do it out of knowing him. He releases his power. And I know I can say I do. <laughs> and everyone should be able to say that. Oh. 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 That's so bad. I mean, like I said, I... Uh, I hope you made it through that. I mean, it's horrible, horrible. And how sad. You know, I, I joke about this. I laugh about this stuff. But, you know, that, that young woman, she is going to hell just as, as sure as you live or breathe. I mean, good night. And see, that's what these ministers of Satan are doing to people. They're disgusting. And that's why we'll continue to, to denounce them. Um, I mean, just... just these people are devil possessed. They literally are. This is what's taking over the churches in this country. Why? Churches are pagan buildings. They were never authorized in your King James Bible. You say, well, you always say that, but you can't prove it. Really? Turn to Acts chapter 7. You know, I should just sit here and just go, I just have a feeling that it's, it's not of God, so therefore I'll just stick with my feeling because... I'm a friend, and I, I'm a I'm a lover, and not a worker. <laughs> Acts chapter seven, verse forty-eight. Actually, we'll start at verse forty-six. Who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob, but Solomon built him in house. Howbeit, verse forty-eight, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? I mean, it's so absurd. It says back in the Old Testament about how God measures the, the universe with the span of his hand from there to there. Like that, just looks down. And you're going to build some house where he's at, huh? You're going to build some little holy temple, little church, some place? Uh-uh. I don't think so. Some little place where you go and you put on your little pageant once a week, twice a week, whatever it is. You go every time the doors are open, that's when you're a Christian. The other times you get to live for yourself out there in the world. I'm not in church right now, so I can tell this dirty joke. I wouldn't tell it in church. That's what's going on here. And you see, what happened to that temple that Solomon built? How long did they worship God in it? A couple years? Then they started bringing in the pagan idols. You know what I mean? Probably started telling people you don't be uh, bound by a paper book. Go with the feeling. As I've said many times before, you need to run away from these Babel buildings. Get out of them. Okay? That's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, Hope I didn't vex you too bad with that little clip there. But I just had to play that. Some comedy for you. Uh, just disgusting. I'm sure some of you probably out there know people like that. You're probably rel related to some of them, but <laughs> it's bad. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.